Hi, welcome to the HTML section of this course. Congrats on making this far. The road ahead will be fun and challenging from now. You are going to witness yourself doing real coding on existing website that we have built earlier. Bugger out, my friends. Okay, let's begin. HTML. It stands for Hypertext Markup Language. What it stands for doesn't matter. The concept behind HTML is that it's like a skeleton. It helps to give your website structure and allows it to stay organized. Now, let's look at some HTML basics. There are three key things in HTML. Tag, element, and attribute. An element is written with start tag and ends with another closing end tag with content between these tags. In HTML, the end tag is just represented by an additional slash as compared to the start tag. Also, circle in the slide, a tag is the whole text with the opening and closing arrow as shown. Now lastly, regarding attribute, it is just some text in the start tag that states a variable and its value. Some common attributes are class and ID, which are used heavily for CSS. Headers. The headers here are not referring to the one in the spot, but those that you see in the newspaper. They are texts that demand attention. They are the headlines. In web pages, header tags have become the primary way for search engines to know the importance of a text on your website. It is a universal common practice for headers to be bold and bigger. However, this is not a must, but just a common practice. The next group of HTML elements that we'll be looking at are the containers. Container is not the official term for the group of elements, but I personally think it's easier to understand them if you treat them like containers. Some examples of containers are shown here. They are the P tag, which is the paragraph tags, the div tags, and the span tags. For the content between paragraph text, they usually have some space either below or on top from the previous or the next element. For the div tag, they are there to help the content between the tag takes up the whole row of the HTML element. Lastly, for the span tag, they are simply containers used to separate a group of tags from one another. Okay, I know it's getting confusing here. Let's try some examples on the WordPress blog that we have built earlier.